Good morning, everybody over here in the United States. This is Magnus Dakin with NCFM.org and the MGTOW Files. And today we're going to be talking with Shinu Asami about the herbivore man in Japan. A lot of you guys have probably heard about it, but I don't think many of you actually know what's going on over there. Shinu, you and I have talked quite a bit about the herbivore man over the last, what, couple of months? Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's been something we've talked about on almost every podcast. It seems to be something that I get a lot of uh, requests for me to talk about since I've been married to two Japanese women and I've lived here for almost 11 years of my life. Yeah, so you're pretty in-depth. You're what I would call up to your hind end in the herbivore culture. Yeah, something that we kind of find out about a lot with the Americans or the guys that like know everything about Japan, but have never really been here. You know, there's a lot of those guys. And I'm going to remind everybody that when you're in a Magnus hangout, you're in the least safe space on the internet because we talk about <laughs> everything. So yep. here we go. Uh, should you just go ahead and uh, tell us a bit about yourself and give us a general overview of the herbivore culture. If you want to. Um, I, I went to college in the U S uh, started studying psychology back in 98 and uh, uh, I've always been into music so I started studying music as well and uh, recently I've in uh, December of last year I was able to get a, a, a PhD in music education and composition and a master's in psychology and I came back here to uh, uh, work with uh, autistic kids and the uh, herbivore men and our uh, otakus and uh, I'm also transgender so I wanted to work with uh, the gay and transgender movements here in in Japan and also try to help a little bit with the uh, uh, culture kind of being in uh, decline and uh, the problem that we're having here with the so many older people coming around and a lot of schools being closed down and uh, that's kind of where the uh, herbivore culture has kind of left the uh, country due to not really feminism. We don't really have feminism over here. We've just kind of got like a advanced case of what feminism would be if, uh, if we were uh, where you guys are in 1976, basically. That's basically around the early 70s is when it started getting about where it was at in America right now. So it's yeah, been getting got, steadily worse. You said well, you've said before that Japan is more or less, more or less should have been considered the canary in the coal mine. Yeah, it's like a, like it's going up all the time. But our what we have right here right now is uh, the estimated seventy percent herbivore men, uh, and not only do we have that, we have uh, you know if if you look at how Japan is, we have about one third of the culture is men. So two thirds are women. So that already means that if every woman got married, there would still be half over half of the women that aren't married. You know, two thirds of the women wouldn't be married. So uh, no, and in order, so in order for all the women to be married, they would have to ship dudes in from like other places. Yeah, what a lot of women do is is what uh, uh, it's a big thing here. What a lot of them are doing is they're going to America. And when they go to America, they're actually uh, finding other, you know, they go to Korea, China, all these other places for college, and then they get married. And really, they don't, it's the same as they do in America. They don't go to college to get a degree. They go to a college to find somebody to marry. Because so in Japan, college, so they're, they're going to college for the infamous MRS degree, as we call it. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, they're not looking for a degree they're looking for a husband and uh, that's the thing there's a lot of foreigners in America and other countries that haven't have a, have a uh, uh, penchant for uh, Japanese women they think Asian women are really sexy and the problem is is most of the women that stay in Japan are the sexy ones and most guys think any Japanese any Asian woman is sexy so they'll marry some Japanese woman that they think is sexy and then they'll come back to Japan and find out that the women that are here are like a hundred times hotter than the girl they married you know 
Well, but that just leads to the now, you know, to kind of get an overview of the herbivore culture, you've told me, and I, I find it fascinating because a lot of guys don't understand this, but just give a brief overview of how the men are actually treated in Japan. Well, from a, from a very young age, most uh, Japanese boys are taught. Um, it, it stems further than what the Americans do, where they teach boys not to hit girls and all that stuff. This is an entire culture that's built on respect. And they train children at a very young age to um, respect their elders, respect somebody that's even a day older than you. Uh, everything's about respect. And as you grow up, um, the only people that they really don't respect are fathers because uh, people in Japan think that fathers are kind of uh, kind of Arbitrary. creepy. No, they're just kind of creepy. They think that most most uh, mothers here know that uh, Japanese fathers go to uh, porn houses and go to hostess clubs and they they know that they talk to the hostesses about them and say bad things about them and uh, wish that they weren't married to them and things like that. So they have this idea that um, you respect your mom, you respect your sister, you respect people who are older than you in your company, but you don't uh, respect the father. And fathers are a utility and you don't really uh, uh, a lot of the wives um, don't uh, have sex with their husbands. Um, if they do, it's at a love hotel. Um, they don't. The it, it's it's really hard if you haven't been involved in the society and you haven't really been in a household where you've seen the dynamic, the family dynamic that a Japanese household has to see the astonishment of what's really going on it's it's amazing to see the family dynamic here because it's so unlike anything else you would ever come across in any other country i've never seen it before i've been to korea and china and many other countries um, i've been married four times and i've been married twice to japanese girls and in both cases it was I, I the second wife wasn't as bad as the first wife but the first wife was the whole family dynamic between her parents and me and her and her her brother and her his wife and you know just the whole thing it was i've never i've never been involved in something so strange in my life yeah and a lot of people have brought up uh, well not a lot of people but in a, a couple of times people have brought up about you know Japanese men work so much that they quite literally drop dead at work. Yeah, it's a common thing that happens. Um, like I was saying in one of the other hangouts that uh, guys tend to, you can't, um, your wife doesn't want to listen to you, your kids don't want to listen to you, the mom kind of raises them like that. So the only way they can get listened to if they go to a hostess club and they have to pay to have a woman listen to them. So they, they end up uh, getting loans and working long hours because to see their kids, they have to pay to see them. And to uh, be listened to, they have to pay. So everything in society you have to pay for, and in some cases you have to pay a lot of money. So they will work and they'll put out loans and they'll work and work and work just so that they can have like a few hours off so they can go to a hostess club or maybe a few hours on a Sunday to go to the zoo with their kids or do something like that, but they can't spend any time with their kids unless they're paying for it. So they work so hard in some cases, some guys will get to the point where they've got so many loans and so many credit card bills and their wives are spending so much of their money that they feel like they have to work uh, almost 24 hours a day and they actually sleep at the work. And, uh, some of them don't sleep and they'll stay up for five days straight, not eat. They'll just work at work and then they drop dead. And it happens, it's not something that happens like, you know, once a year. It happens almost every month. 
Now, uh, just because I, I actually had sort of the wrong-headed impression of this, too, and in case anybody else does now, a hostess club isn't necessarily a whorehouse or anything. It's just women Typically are paid it's not. to listen to these. Yeah, it's, well, it's, it's, it's just mostly these women are paid to listen to these guys bitch about their jobs, bitch about their bosses, bitch about their wives, bitch about their lives, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much it's just a way for them to, to get blow off steam. Hostess clubs are typically um, girls between the ages of uh, 16 and like 26 or 28. And these are just young women that the guys will come in and talk to. And if they want to go to a like a place like a whorehouse, it's more of the uh, massage parlor. And the massage parlors are typically um, uh, ran by like Koreans and Chinese and stuff like that and that's why in the Japanese culture Koreans are looked down upon especially Koreans they're very looked down upon because m most of the time they came to Japan to be prostitutes so if, if you have like a Japanese woman that's married to a Japanese or a Japanese man that's married to a Korean woman most of the mothers and people look down on her because they think that she probably met him in a hostess club or in a in a whorehouse basically in a in a massage parlor and uh, he ended up marrying a prostitute and that's what they think even if that's not the case maybe she's like very well educated and and met him while he was in on away in business on in japan or something like that they they don't know but they will assume that he's he's uh married to a prostitute oh wow so basically, you know, and you've touched on a lot of this before. I'm trying to mm -hmm. figure the best questions to ask. Now, one one thing you've told me is like, yeah, you know, a lot of people have seen pictures, and if they haven't, you know, this is a good time to bring it up. Like, uh, you know, these guys work all the time, and they it's a formality to actually go out drinking with the boss after work. And, you know, we've all, uh, a lot of us who, who even take any interest in that culture have seen the pictures of like the, older Japanese man passed out on the subway in his underwear or something. Yeah. And that's a common, that's actually a common thing. And you said yeah. before that these guys are only really allowed to get mouthy with their boss after they've had a couple of drinks in them. Yeah. It's, it's more than that. Actually, the, the, uh, the college institution is set up over here to where it's, it's unlike you have to be very, uh, um, very matter of fact about what you decide to do with your life. So when you go to college, you have to know for sure what you're going to college for because you have to pay up front. And what will end up happening is these guys will uh, pay to go to college and they will end up uh, um, going to college for something like, uh, you know, a internet degree or a doctor or something like that and they end up having to go through the whole course even if they decide that they don't want to uh, go to the course anymore after a year and because they've already paid for it and they don't allow them to switch so a lot of guys can't afford to go back to college and they end up working in a job once they get out of college and the whole time they're telling themselves that they're going to go back to college for something they really wanted to do, but uh, that there's no there's no telling whether they'll actually wanted to do that either once they get into the college. But they have this idea like that. They have that kind of in the back of their head, like, well, I'll go back to college later. And they're constantly thinking that way, which is what kind of gives them a lot of depression. But they end up working on some job thinking they're going to be able to save money to someday go back to college and they're they buy like really expensive suits you know like five thousand dollar armani suits and stuff and they they work and every night they get off of work they have to go to bars with their boss and drink that's just something they do almost every day of the week with their with their bosses after work it's just something they do and they uh they will typically be very unhappy about their job even in even the boss and they will drink almost to the point uh even not almost to the point to the point where they they get alcohol poisoning there's a lot of cases here of japanese people that get alcohol poisoning so they get uh they they end up uh, 
they, they it's like really hard here here to find a uh, AA clinic and stuff. They don't have a lot of stuff like that here. My uh, ex-wife's dad was an alcoholic, and I told her and explained to her what it was, and I told her we need to get him into some clinic. And we looked all over Kobe, and there was only like two clinics in Kobe, and there's like a hundred million people in Kobe. You know, <laughs> there's only like two alcohol clinics. You know, so it was pretty crazy. But it's it's just the the culture here is set up kind of like ireland where everybody drinks it's just a thing and it's kind of something they they are raised to do from a very young age to think that alcohol is something cool and you know they got sake and all this kind of stuff here so it's just a drinking culture and these guys will just go out and drink and drink and drink and a lot of them don't even make it home they end up passing out in the train station and passing out on the train and you know they'll they'll actually drink themselves almost to death you know and uh it's it's mainly because they're completely unhappy with their life you know and i don't see a lot mainly, of yeah i was gonna I, say and that's mainly the fact that these guys are working practically 24 7. they may get a day off like a sunday or something to hang out with their kids and that's only if the wife says yes and she may, but you've, you, I think you've said before, she may very well vacate the house with the kids before he even wakes up. Yeah. And she'll tell him something like it. Like I was, I wanted you to be able to sleep in on your day off instead of having him be able to pay, you know, having him be able to do something with his kids on his day off. She wants him to spend time alone on his day off, you know, which makes it, Basically, what she's trying to tell him is you shouldn't have a day off. You should just go to work because on your day off, you're not going to spend any time with us either. You know? Yeah, and you said um, that there's a suicide forest somewhere there. Yeah. I don't remember where you said it was, but these they're, they're a lot. they find a lot of dead bodies out there. Give us a... 100 a, a year, suicide. they say. There's, there's 100 bodies found there per year, and there's many more that they don't find because the forest is so big, they, uh, they uh, can't really go in there. It's hard for them to map it and find out like how it's, – it's actually a, quite a big forest. It's in a small area. It's on the west side of Mount Fuji. But they, uh, if you go in there, for some reason, I don't know if it's the mountain or what, but because of the magnetics in that area – uh, compasses don't work so you can't tell whether you're facing north south east or west or whatever so if you get in there a lot of people get lost and even people that don't want to commit suicide get lost in there and die you know so they're they have paths that they've put through there and they tell people to not uh, uh, go off the path but it's it's a it's been a suicide forest for thousands of years, and there actually used to be a, uh, a mountain in that area as well that they called Obashite, which was like where they would take um, old Japanese women and old Japanese men that they didn't want anything to do with anymore, and they'd actually throw them off the mountain because they were uh, getting too old to take care of, and they were old and you know couldn't walk anymore, and they were having to take care of them. So what they would do is they would carry them up on their back to the mountain, and they would throw them off the mountain. Oh, wow. But uh, yeah, it's the part of the culture. Uh, they consider they consider suicide in in Japan uh, a uh, it's not an easy way out. It's like a honorable way to die. You know, it's basically like taking it upon yourself uh, to not be um, taken to a point where you or, feel you're being disrespected. You know, it, you don't feel, or even, you know, or, like, even, or even being a, or even not being a burden on your family. Or yeah, like because that. that's disrespectful. That's like, you know, you're losing honor by be by being a burden to your family. And in Japan, if you most of the men have a hundred thousand to over a million dollar uh, policy. If you have a a governmental policy where you um, you get everybody gets kind of like uh, retirement plans in Japan. Everybody, it's through the government. So even even I have one from working here. And when you when you uh, retire, you get that money, or when you die, you get your wife gets that money. 
So depending on if you have that or if you have that plus something from a company that you worked at for 30 years, uh, you could be getting as, and you might have one that you paid for as well on top of that. So some guys have like three of them. So you may have as much as, you know, a couple million dollars or more, you know, on a, on a plan. So uh, some of these men will get into these cases where they've had so many, uh, they have so many loans that they've taken out and they've lost so much money or maybe they're just, they've got a divorce and their wife is taking them for everything they have and um, they're having to work all the time and they're really not making any money and they don't have much of a life and they're going to end up being homeless. They're going to get kicked out on the street or something like that. And they'll actually uh, commit suicide. But one of the, one of the best ways that they do commit suicide in Japan and it's why you'll start, you've started seeing here now is a, uh, in front of the trains now, they have uh, these big walls, stainless steel walls. A lot of them, in, I've never seen one in Kobe, but they have them in Tokyo because this stuff happens a lot in Tokyo in the bigger cities. They have like, when, once the train pulls up, then the doors open. So you can't actually jump off the in front of the train anymore because it was becoming such a problem. But uh, because of that, now more men are starting to uh, hang themselves and you know do other things like that. And uh, some of them even go as far as like drinking themselves to death and, you know, things like that. And you've said that a lot of the reason why the uh, herbivore culture actually exists and kind of has been around since the, you said the late 70s or early 80s, I think. Yeah, it's basically the, the, the uh, culture started declining and children started to be less and less starting from like 1976. And it's been ongoing since then. You know, so it's, it's been, been going on. It's been going on practically since I was born. Yeah, a lot of a lot of people. It's kind of funny because a lot of people you'll hear these CNN people talking about it, and they act like they know what they're talking about, but they'll start saying like it's been a, it's been a problem the last five years or something like that. No, it's it's been a steady decline since 1976, and it's getting worse and worse till now. We're at 70 percent herbivore men and rising. Well, that's because the news only seems to report on a problem when it actually starts becoming a big problem. But yeah. now, um, one of the things we had touched on before in, a, in you know more private hangouts was that you know these boys over in Japan are the reason they're going there before is because they're growing up watching their father just work, 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 never gets any respect. Uh, nobody actually gives a crap about him. And they're growing up seeing this and they're thinking, why would I, you know, much like, you know, modern MGTOW, they're looking at this and thinking, why would I subject myself to that? Yeah, it's, it's something that happens in the U.S. Uh, as well. But for some reason, the uh, because they still have a chance to get something out of it, a lot of the American kids will still want to have a girlfriend and a wife and stuff like that. And they get led into believing that it's something great. But the way the culture is set up here, most of your kids will end up spending all their time with grandma and grandpa. And the mom and the dad, uh, usually the mom doesn't work, but lately it's becoming a thing where the mom has to work too. So uh, if she doesn't work, she'll go hang out with her friends from the school where the kids are going to, and then they talk about how bad their husbands are, typically. And uh, what will end up happening is the... Uh, Husbands will uh, get into a situation where they have to. Uh... Oh shit! I forgot what I was talking about. <laughs> well, that's okay. One of the things I did it's want like to bring midnight. up. It's was, midnight here. <laughs> well, that's okay. Now, one of the yeah. things you'd mentioned before is that Japan is almost like a you know over here we talk about men being cuckolded, you know where the oh. wives are out screwing other dudes. But Japan yeah. is practically a cuckold culture. Yeah, you know, the pretty much. The husbands are at work and the wives just go boink their boyfriends. Yeah, I mean, in, in Japan, there was actually a, an NHK study that came out. And NHK is kind of like our CBS. And they uh, did a study where they found out that most women consider having sex with their husbands like doing laundry. So it's on the same same wavelength to them it's not something they do for pleasure it's something they have to do because they're it's their duty and uh that's why they once they've had kids with their husband and in, in a lot of cases i i believe 
uh, they don't do a lot of the, they won't, they would never come out and say, but I think a lot of the women here are actually having uh, children with, with someone else. And then the husband, you know, that's why they don't really have, the husband really would never know anyways, because he's never home, you know. Britain where, you know, oh, yeah, sorry, you cut out there, but uh, what I was saying was this almost like in Britain where the, uh, most of the men there, Did I lose you? Yeah, it just, it, it made kind of a strange noise and then you stopped talking. So I was like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, no, I was, yeah. I was saying it's almost like in Britain where, like, uh, I can't remember the percentage, but most men in Britain are raising boys and girls and children that aren't even theirs. Yeah. So in Japan, well, that's like even higher possibility. Yeah, that's why I'm, and it, it's something that wouldn't be, they wouldn't ever talk about something like that. And I don't even think they'd ever do a study on something like that because it would, just wouldn't be respectful. But when I was in college in uh, 98, the professor who was, uh, she was in her 70s, I think, she told us about a study that had happened in America where they said that 63% uh, of American husbands were raising children that weren't theirs. And this was found out because uh, they would go in for like a broken leg or something like that. And they might have to do blood work up. And because they were the family doctor, they would find out that the, the mother's blood type and the children's blood type were the same. But the father's blood type didn't match the children. And then, you know, the, these are the cases where they would find out. But the thing is, is there's probably a higher amount than that because there's many cases where the father may never know and that that would never yeah, be that something. Percent, that, that, percentage is, that percentage that, is just based on what they've seen, not, not necessarily. Yeah. It's something that they've accidentally found. You know, that's the thing. It's something <laughs> they've accidentally found. So the case is, the case is, is well, the, the thing is, is even with people in Japan, a lot of Japanese women are just like American uh, women. They're attracted to strong, athletic, uh, handsome guys. And typically those guys are Casanovas. They want to go out and they want to fuck a lot of girls and they don't want to, you know, get stuck at home with kids and stuff like that. So those guys are good for making babies, but they're not good for being daddies. So they have to stick with some nerdy kind of dorky guy that wants to work at a job the rest of his life and end up you know taking care of the kids and he wants to be a father and all this stuff but they don't want to have a kid with that guy because his his uh genes aren't very good you know they're going to end up with what kind of ner basically. nerdy short kids you know so they go out and they find some what, muscle yeah, bound hunk yeah basically what the MGTOW refer to as the beta male provider yeah you know so the, I, I did a video on it uh, not too long ago. Um, it's uh, it's it's a it's basically where they would where they uh, uh, they kind of uh, hide that they're in menstruation or that they're able to have children, you know, and they go out and have children with someone else and get pregnant with somebody else, you know, instead of their husband. And like I say, because the the 60, 64% is only the ones they've stumbled across. And this is the thing that a lot of people don't understand is this is 64% of the guys that think they're raising their own kids, not guys that have, have like married some woman and she's taking care of somebody. He's taking care of somebody else's kids and he knows it. This is guys that have married some girl that she's told him that she's a virgin and she's never been with anybody else or some crap like that. And then he, has like two kids and then when they're like 10 years old he finds out they're not his you know yeah so basically basically you know in japan it's it's been this has been going on like you said since 1976 and it's only really started getting at that at to that level in america and britain and canada over the last i'd say probably 20 years yeah yeah it's uh it's it's been getting worse and worse here and the thing with japan is they really especially with the government they're kind of worse than the american government they really are they're so worried about their honor and their respect they get really pissed off if like people like me 
get on the internet and talk about Japanese culture and Japanese life because they uh, they never never do that. You know, nothing's bad about Japan. So they get really mad when when people like me will get on and basically just tell the truth about what's going on here. And uh, they the government will hide a lot of things from the culture, from the people, and they'll also hide a lot of things from other countries. Like when Fukushima happened, they told everybody that it was taken care of and it was under control and people in Japan that it was under control and all this stuff. And uh, it wasn't, and it still isn't, you know, and they're still having so problems. It's, it's sort of that pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Everything's fine. Just, just keep going, doing what you're doing. Yeah. And that's why that's the whole, I mean, I think if like right now, if you look at the United States with MRAs and MGTOW, you're probably looking at only about, I would say less than 10% of the population. And if America got to 40% of the population that was MGTOW and, and MRA, they would shit their pants. But they would never let the culture get to if the entire culture of the United States, because there's so many more people than in Japan, if the entire population of the United States got 70% MGTOW and herbivore, they would lose their fucking minds because they would be losing so much money. There would be no pro productivity. Their GDP would drop. Their economy would just fall to nothing. You know, they couldn't afford to have uh, it go and, that high. But in Japan, well, just even, so many people in such a oh. small area. They're on such a small little island that they can afford to have it at 70% and still make a profit because a lot of these guys are well, still working. They're just not getting married. Well, and, yeah, and you said before that um, a lot of these herbivore men – have to kind of hide the fact from their employers that they're herbivore men. Yeah, if you tell your your employers that, because a lot of these incentives and stuff that are set up in Japan are set up for families, and they don't tend to want to hire people into jobs where the man isn't dating or going to be married. Um, so it's very hard to get a get a good career going here in Japan unless you're married and you have a wife. So a lot of guys will um, uh, say a lot of I've heard some of them say things like they're gay and they have a partner, you know, and that's becoming a problem now, too, because they're actually uh, uh, gay marriage is starting to be legal here. Actually, the first couple, uh, first female uh, lesbian couple got married uh, last month, I believe, and they were recognized in Tokyo. So uh, gay marriage is actually starting to be legal here in Japan. And now if they say something like that, like they have a, a gay gay boyfriend or something like that, and they're not going to get married to a woman, then that kind of gets them off the hook. But now they're kind of, they're going to have to get married to some gay man too. So, you know, so now they can't or do they, that or, can, or they could actually just put up the pretense, uh, just have a roommate living in the same house and pretend they're gay. Yeah. Well, in some cases, what they do is the same things they do in India and other countries where they, a, a lesbian and a gay man will live together and they'll actually have boyfriends and girlfriends. And in some cases, they even get married and they do it both for work because the lesbian woman uh, gets more incentives at her job as well if she's not with the woman. But now that marriage is becoming legal here, that may all change. But for a long time, that was the case where they would uh, there's a lot of couples here in Japan who are married and uh, don't have kids together and are just married for the fact that they kind of had to be, you know, and they'll be part of like a LGBT club and they'll, they'll say, Hey, you know, you want to marry me so that, you know, I can tell my boss that I'm married and you can tell your boss that you're married and we'll keep seeing our boyfriends and girlfriends. And, you know, it's a really kind of a fucked up culture that they've set up where they're, uh, you have to hide who you really are. But the LGBT culture and uh, stuff has been in Japan for a long time. We don't have the, uh, the uh, religious aspects holding us back here. We don't have the Christianity and Islamic and all that bullshit going on. So yeah, yeah, it's over, a lot over freer. In Japan, uh, over in Japan, the main religions, I believe, are Buddhism and Shinto. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And neither one of them have been anything to do with some book and of some deity telling you not to sleep with men you know so okay. well yeah, yeah that makes a lot more sense but yeah, yeah. That, 
uh, that, that that just kind of leads you to the thought that you know these get these people all these people have to hide who they really are except for from what their most intimate partners and they may even be this in the same situation so yeah it's just wild yeah but now well, um yeah so you know basically these herbivore men are just you know they're kind of like more of an extreme version of MGTOW and not even like they don't even have that red pill rage anymore. They're just like, yeah, screw that. I'm, I'm just going to go over here and do something else. No, it's more like red pill malaise. <laughs> yeah. They just, yeah, they don't. Point, well, we're, yeah, we're they, talking about 39 years worth of, yeah, of, of this kind of thing. And I, I would guess like there was a form of red pill rage, maybe back, back in the seventies or eighties, but. Well, yeah, it's kind now, of really yeah, creepy. See, you know, that's the thing. You don't really notice it. It's one of those things in this culture where people don't talk about it. And it's just something that kind of creeps up on them till now they're in full meltdown mode because there's so many older people. And the thing is, is that people have to understand how the society works because there's new people coming in and paying their taxes and paying their, uh, the money into the coffers that actually pays, uh, cause they're spending the money all the time. So you're, you're paying money now, to pay for somebody before so the people that are working right now are the ones that are paying for the social security for the old people that are here now so the less children you have coming into the workforce means the less money that are in the coffer for when those people retire but it also leaves less money to pay for those old people so our co our country is in full meltdown mode because there's not enough money being put into the coffer to pay for as many old people as we have in our culture right now because most of our culture is old so we have all these all these people on on uh, health care and and you know like social security disability type stuff and there's not enough people in the in the, in the, in the work environments in japan now that are making enough money to put enough money into the coffer because you go you have to put a certain amount of money uh off of what you're making and since a lot of guys are not going into engineering and stuff like that like they used to where they'd make exorbitant amounts of money where they'd make you know ten thousand dollars a month or something they're they're making like twelve hundred dollars a month and they're perfectly fine with that because they don't have a girlfriend they have a studio apartment they don't really do anything they don't go out you know maybe they go out and drink with their boss or something like that so that's really all the money they spend and they end up living on ramen noodles and kind of having not much of a life but uh in the way the MGTOWs are, it's kind of a better life than you would have if you were living with a woman because you're going to have to basically be the ATM for her and give her almost all your money and never have a life. You know, you can't have your own life. You're living her life, whatever she wants, whatever she wants. You know, that's well, all she just does. Like, you're just like a utilitarian extension of her life and, and your kids. Your daughter can expect to grow up and be just like her mom whereas your son is pretty much shackled to a life of you know work and utility unless he goes herbivore basically yeah that's the thing with a lot of the japanese boys they grew up seeing that and they just uh they got it they cut they kind of get that in their face where they're they uh see how it really is by watching their grandparents and watching their parents the way they re interact and they're very stoic here. They don't touch each other. They don't hold each other. They don't kiss each other. And from from a psychological idea of the way children learn about sexuality, they learn that from their parents and from watching their interaction. So they become very uh, deprived of uh, what it means to be in a relationship. So when they get into a boyfriend-girlfriend relationship, they really have no idea how to act. And they don't really know what it means anymore to do that. And they don't show uh, PDA, the public affection. And they, so they, they have this really strange idea about what sex is and what uh, affection is and what it means to be intimate. And uh, it's, it's really just in the last like, you know, 40 years gotten worse and worse to where the children now, they're just, fucked in their head their idea of what life is over here is just completely crazy you know when well, you talk and, to some of yeah, them and before, the, and before the show we were i was talking to you about some of the anime that i watch and there's a lot of uh 
there's probably quite a number of people in my audience that watch anime, me being one of them. And, you know, when you watch these animes, it's like the girls are all about, oh, I want to be the housewife that cooks and cleans and has sex when you with, with you when you come home and all this lovey-dovey stuff. And that's like, you know, you know, I know you don't watch anime, but that's the, even just that description, it's nowhere near even close to that in the actual culture. Yeah, no, we don't have that kind of stuff. You know, it's uh, in this culture, um, the otaku are the guys that really do that. But we do have a lot of like anime that's on TV that's kind of like The Simpsons, you know, something like that. And those are those are things that you might, you know, you might find. But other than that, you're not really going to find a lot of uh, a lot of uh, anime that's on TV that people are gonna, you know, think is something they want to they want to watch all the time and stuff like they do in America. They're just not. Uh, it's just not something you're going to find. We're not really that interested over here. The other, the thing that you do find a lot, though, is the uh, uh, what do you call them? The uh, uh, the manga comics. There's uh, a big culture here for those. They love manga comics here in Japan. Bet. Well, I mean, a lot of people over here do as well. Yeah, and that seems to be, it, it's it, it. Sometimes it seems almost like um, the anime that we see over here is almost a total misrepresentation of the actual culture, and it's more of a uh, sort of a Japanese fairy tale. And people over here, I know a lot of people are like, you know, oh man, I'd love to live in Japan, and it's like, not really. When you find out what the culture's really like, it's way different. Yeah, a lot of people see like movies or they hear people talking about it. The other thing that we got here is like I was telling you, we get a lot of uh, foreigners that come over here. And the way the internet works, they really get pissed off if people talk about uh, Japan. You know, in, in, in any, like if you say anything truthful about Japan. So it's very hard for them to, uh, you know, you'll hear so many people talking about Japan and they talk about how great it is and how the culture is and how wonderful it is. And they never say anything bad about it. And every country, it doesn't matter where you're at, every country has something bad about it. And it has a lot of shit bad about it usually. And I like I like to be one of those people that's truthful. I'm not going to say it's all, you know, roses and unicorns and fairy dust if it's not, you know. So I'm, I'm kind of a realist and I don't uh, sugarcoat things and I'm not going to be over here and tell everybody how great and wonderful it is if it's not. So... You know, I just, that's something I do on my channel is I like to talk about truth, you know, and say, say what's really going on. And I don't, I haven't really had anybody come on my channel, but I don't, I don't do videos in Japanese. If I did videos in Japanese or translated my videos and put uh, Japanese in the bottom of the video, uh, I might get a lot of hate. I might get it, start getting a lot of hate from Japanese people because there's a lot of Japanese people that don't watch Americans, uh, in Japan and watch Japanese like Americans doing vlogs. So yeah, and that's that's kind of part of the reason why I'm doing this particular podcast. You know, so early in the week. Normally, I would do them on Saturdays, but this is kind of one of those where you know because of the time difference, I, you know, and this is information to me that people have heard of it. They've heard of snippets of it here and there, but they really don't fully have a grasp on just how bad it is. And it's like you said before, it's because the Japanese culture only wants to present the clean cut, you know, salary man all whistling, going to work in his suit and tie when it's really more like he's just, you know, like an automaton just going to work day in and day out and has just like a totally shit life, if you want to be truthful yeah. about it. Yeah. Well, the. Like I was saying in some of the other hangouts, the average the average businessman here, like ninety percent of the businessmen work ninety hours a week. That's a that's a work week here in Japan, ninety hours. And that just leaves him basically enough time to go home, shower, eat, and go to bed. It exactly. Really leave him time for anything yeah. else. Yeah. But it's then, just not you know, something to do. 
you know, they don't think about so what, family. Yeah, we were talking about the suicide forest earlier, but I, I forgot to have you add. What's the, what's the percentage, you, would you say, of male suicide rates there in Japan? Uh, I did a video on it uh, a couple weeks ago. It's uh, um, I think they said there was a, th a thousand a, a day is what we're looking at, uh, like a, th a thousand a day. And that and that's just the hundred a year. That's that's on top of the hundred a year they find in the suicide forest. That's not even. No, that's with that's, that's with even, that. That's with that. Yeah. We're getting we're getting a little over sixty thousand per year, something like that. Sure. I think around sixty sixty three thousand per year of suicides. Almighty. Yeah. And and generally in like countries like the U.S. and Britain and Canada. I don't know if it's combined, but the male suicide rates are something like eighty percent men. Yeah, yeah. Here it's here it's almost uh, one hundred percent men. There's uh, you're looking at uh, about a uh, maybe eighty eight percent men. You know, thing. It's pretty much well, like I man. say. If a woman dies in Japan, like commits suicide, it really doesn't have any nothing's going to happen. She doesn't really have much for like a, you know, if she dies, the husband's not really going to get anything. You know, all they get is rid of their wife, you know? So it's not really going to be a, be a problem for him if he die if she dies, but if, if he dies, she gets money. So it's something that he would really, um, uh, like I say, it's kind of an incentive. So if, if, um, uh, they're having problems. That's it's something that happens a lot in Japan. That sometimes the wives will actually kill the husbands and try to make it look like it was an accident or a suicide, you know. And that's that's a common problem here as well. Is uh, there's actually been several women that have came out like 20 years after their husband died, and they've actually told friends and family, and been convicted of murder 20 years after the fact because they came out and said that they actually killed their husband. Oh, wow. So that suicide rate you're talking about, that's not even counting the murder rates. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that, that's, that's, yeah that's that's kind of surprisingly low, though. The murder, the murder rate in Japan is very low. You know, it's like really low because we don't have like a lot of that kind of stuff that goes on here. The, most of the murders are from the Yakuza. And there's not a lot of like uh, there is murders here, but it's like, you know, a few a few a year. You know, not like America, like the gun deaths in America are like, you know, seven or 8,000 per year just from guns. And that's not knives or beating to death or, you know, burning somebody down in their house or, you know, all the other shit that goes on. There's And then you got your heart disease and everything else. So, I mean, the the amounts of, uh, like, violent death here in Japan are pretty, pretty low, you know. Wow. So, yeah, the, so most of the deaths are from suicide or you know, accidental yeah. or natural causes or something like that. It's not, you know, the the smaller percentage is people who are actually murdered by somebody else. Yeah, there's a, it's pretty low. I would, I don't know the actual stuff, but knowing from the, watching the TV and stuff here, I would say there's probably less than a thousand a year that actually get killed by somebody else, you know? Wow. And a lot of those would probably be Yakuza, you know? Yeah, and I think everybody's heard of them already. But yeah, yeah, you you had told me before that in Japanese culture, you know, Americans are more feared because, you know, if an American starts yelling about something, people are more standoffish because an American might actually pop you in the nose or something. Whereas most of the Japanese people aren't even; they don't even do that. Yeah, in Japanese culture, they. All you have to do here in Japan to make some Japanese guy do what you want or Japanese people is just start cursing because they know what American curse words are and they know that you're mad and they get really scared. But in Japanese culture, they roll their they roll their words. And uh, if you listen to like Yakuza guys talk, they'll roll their words and it sounds scary to them. It sounds stupid to me, but I, they grow up thinking that that means they're Yakuza, you know. So they, they start to 
they they have this stupid way of talking that they think it sounds very scary and uh if you if you uh talk with the yakuza guys and then you get in their face and tell them to fuck off you fucking motherfucking prick and shit like that they get scared even of, of foreigners because they know that most people are scared of them just because they're yakuza but americans aren't scared of them and americans aren't scared of japanese people either so they know that like if they say something that's something that they don't learn here in japan it's like something most people learn in america but they're starting to not learn this you learn at a young age not to run your mouth because you might get punched in the mouth and they that's not something they learn here in japan because they don't ever fight a lot of you aren't allowed to fight here in japan so they know that americans are like that so they kind of watch what they say to americans so that's well, also the reason actually, why they're uh, worried about speaking english because a lot of japanese people know how to speak english but they don't want to because they're worried they're going to say something wrong and they know that americans if they say something wrong they could get punched in the mouth and they don't want to make a mistake and get hit so they are very well, very that cautious very, that, very, uh, that very thing you're talking about um i didn't want to watch the movie but i actually had a friend of mine made me sit down and watch it that uh fast and furious tokyo drift and there's a scene in that where the little short black kid in the uh who lives in japan he starts you know they're they're gonna steal tires for their cars and he starts going off about the the soda he gets at the gas station and all three of the guys at the gas station are just kind of back with their hands up like oh and he's just he's just going off making a show of it but that explains that scene is because they're worried he's actually going to get violent on somebody when he's really just showing his ass to get their attention while the other ones sneak in and steal the tires from the cars yeah exactly yeah it's it's just the way they are here they they know how how foreigners are and they really worry that uh a foreigner might punch him in the mouth and not just punch him in the mouth, but might knock him out, you know, because they won't just do it because, you know, they want to kind of get you out of their face. When a foreigner punches you, they kind of try to knock your ass out. And <laughs> they don't want to get knocked out by a foreigner, you know. Oh, yeah. I would imagine that. It's like trying not to get bit by a dog. <laughs> you got to kind yeah. of like, woos. Yeah, they don't want to come into work the next day with a black eye and the boss asks what happened. And then they, get, they say, I got in a fight with a foreigner and he knocked me out, you know. <laughs> That doesn't look very good. It kind of make, lose respect, you know. <laughs> well, we're coming up on the uh, on the last ten minutes of the show. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to untie the reins and anything you think that uh, that we might have missed or you know that you think is really important for people to know. You just go ahead and start talking, and then I'll end the show. Take your ten minutes. Go for it. Um. Let's see. Well the the way the the divorce system and the uh, marriage system works here in Japan is uh, much worse than the American system and they kind of like they didn't have to uh, make the laws from the time that like they are now with with uh, feminists going around and trying to uh, make more laws so that they have more rights than the men and they can take their kids and take their house and all that stuff it's like that's the way they set the system up in japan it's always been that way because uh the women are more uh, they kind of run society here and they run society in america too but they try to they act like they don't and because of that yeah, japan, japan is sort of a uh, uh, i'm sorry to break in but i was going to say japan is sort of a uh, like like the bur the like you said the canary in the coal mine where it's like what happens when hypergamy and gynocentrism goes nuts yeah i mean it, like i say it's in this country it's way worse than any other country you'll find i think the only other country you'll find that's almost as bad as this but it's because of feminism is sweden they're they're nuts over there they they've gone to the point where like a guy if a guy looks at you on a bus they say he, he raped me you know and they can actually get charges put on him for that and they don't have that kind of thing here in japan but they don't really have to you know they 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 women have so much above men in this culture they can 
they can if they can find so like I say, there's so many more women than men. They really don't understand how how much how little power they have and how much power the men don't understand how much they have, because they have their choice of lots of women that they could choose anybody, and they always end up choosing some woman that that knows what she has and knows what she can get out of somebody. And it's usually the really sexy, hot-looking women that end up married in Japan. And once they're married in Japan, they do the same thing they do in America. They kind of turn into kind of frumpy women, you know, and they, they gain weight and they lose a lot of their sexiness because they've already got a husband. And it's kind of a lot of people don't realize that this is what goes on. But the reason why women do that in the U.S. is because they were only looking for somebody to have kids with so that they could uh, get an ATM machine. And once they have that, now they can stop. Now they don't they don't need to be sexy anymore because even if they even if the guy leaves them because they got too fat and ugly, they'll still be able to use him for money and take him to court, make him pay alimony and palimony and whatever the fuck she wants them to pay for. And that's the same thing they got going on here in Japan is you know, the the women only have to do that once, but if if he doesn't pay her, she already gets money from the state anyways. And then it's kind of like a like he has to pay the money to the state, and then the state gives the uh, money to the wife. So she gets the money anyways, whether he pays for it. And then and then he owes them. So he, um, you know, you you end up working to pay the wife just like you do in America. But the system actually started that way. It didn't become that way like it is now in America. So it's it's been a rigged game since the beginning and it's not it's not getting any worse any better here but because it started out that way and the laws haven't changed they've just stayed that way men have woken up to the fact that they're uh, you know from being raised in a family like that and seeing that from the time they're children they're realizing what they're getting themselves into and deciding not to so the herbivore culture which has been going on since the 70s is is kind of guys just walking away for good and not having anything to do. A lot of them have absolutely nothing to do with women. And they're like, there's actually guys in Japan that are 50 years old and have never had sex and have never had a girlfriend and don't want to. So they are basically the real life sort of MGTOW monks that we talk about here. But these guys, they're not even angry about it. They're just like, yeah, nah, so I'll, I'll do my own thing you guys go ahead and have fun with what you're doing yeah well like i've talked about before if a lot of if a lot of younger boys in there you know when they take you away into those into those rooms and tell you about about getting hard-ons and masturbation and then they take the women women into those rooms if a MGTOW could sit down in that room and talk to the boys and they decided to become MGTOW and not date women from that time and they went to college and got a degree and then did something for 20 years, by the time they were 40 or 45, they could retire for the rest of their life with millions of dollars in the bank. Because the only reason why most men don't have money is because they've been with a woman. And they end up spending all of their money on kids and houses and shit that the wife wants to do and cars and crap that she's wanting and things she needs. and and you oh she wants a bigger house so i gotta go rent a bigger house and that's gonna cost me more money and then she wants another car because i need one to drive to work and she wants one to drive to the kids schools and you know so you gotta have two cars that means i gotta pay two things of insurance and i've got to pay more gas money and they just it just drains you it takes all of your fucking money and if you can get into a life where you're not doing that you could easily save up millions of dollars by the time you were in your 40s and you could retire and buy a houseboat and live in Florida for the rest of your life. You know, and if you could if you can convince these young boys this, that's the only way you're going to really change the feminism and change the herbivore men because these young kids need to realize that they have the power to change this and the only way to change it is just to completely disassociate yourself with anything that has to do with uh, women, you know. Yep, and that's kind of the, you know, that, I mean, it, guys over here in a, in the Western countries, you know, I, I when I'm so when I say Western countries, I'm just going to go ahead and 
make that a blanket statement for Britain, Canada, and America because we may think we have it bad, but yeah, it's, it's nothing we go through holds a candle to what men go through in Japan. Yeah. Uh, because I would presume that even the herbivore men are expected to work 90 hours a week if they're a businessman or a salary man or something. Yeah, most of them don't care though once they're herbivore men because, you know, but a lot of the herbivore men end up being the uh, otaku guys where they stay at home. Their mother and father actually take care of them. And in some cases, they don't go out very much at all. And that's actually a big problem that I, I deal with a lot of those guys. And they end up, uh, you know, staying in their bedroom and their mom and dad feed them and they're in their 30s and 40s and they've never had a job. And they, some of them don't finish high school because they had so many like mental issues and stuff from being in high school that they don't even they don't even go anywhere they just stay in their house and they're just otaku guys they like to read read uh, comic books and watch video games and anime and that's all they do that's what they do their whole day and they don't associate with anybody and they're kind of almost like autistic that's the culture of otaku here is, is almost like if you talk to them you're talking to somebody that is a lot like an autistic child you know well, and that's one of the things that, you know, like I said, if people, if people really understood what was going on over there, and that's part of why we're doing this now, just, just to give an idea, I, I, I'm thinking about maybe in a couple of weeks doing sort of a part two to this, if you don't mind, where yeah. we can discuss like what the women are actually like and go more in depth because I mean, I, I you know, an hour long podcast, that's, that's barely enough to even scratch yeah. the surface really. I've done four videos on my wives and those videos, my, I think the video I did on my second wife, I think, or my first wife, I forget, it's already got like 21,000 views and I made it like two and a half months ago or something. It's already got like 21,000 views and I've only got like less than 1,300 uh, subscribers on my channel and I've got like several videos that, that got like over, over 15 and 20,000 views from talking about herbivore men. Oh, yeah. All right. So at some point here in the next couple of weeks, we'll pick this back up again. Thank you, everybody who joined us. And for those of you who are listening later, keep all this in mind. And with that, boys and girls, man up and move out.